Oh, now I'm going to um, call on a friend and colleague, Greg Rowe. Greg Rowe needs no introduction to this group, I'm sure. He's the Director of Cultural Initiatives at the Pew Charitable Trust, and he's also a Deputy Director at the Trust for the Philadelphia Program. But I think of Greg with great affection as uh, I, I attended the first of these two meetings of funders, uh, as the grant maker who, in my presence, made an impassioned plea for funding depreciation on buildings. That, to me, you know, <laughs> pre pretty much means my work is done. <laughs> so thank you, Greg. <laughs> I, I didn't know that's really what you wanted, Claire. I could have said that years ago if I had known that. Um, I, I want to start with, with just uh, acknowledging uh, Clara as the thought leader in this subject for many, many years and the person who we finally have all, uh, maybe we started listening to. She truly is that, that person. I want to, I have, uh, we're, we're highly scripted, by the way. We're supposed to stick to script. Clara didn't, so I'm not going to either. But uh, I want to start by asking how many people in this room came into the arts because you were interested in balance sheets and capitalization? <laughs> Just raise your hands. Okay? All right. This is, the mo Jan this is the most boring subject in the world to start a conference on. So <laughs> I'm going to switch it. I'm going to try to switch it around. This is a conversation about art institutional ability to make art and the artist's ability to make art. And today we're going to talk about what we can do about this. And going back to my script, we, our funding community is diverse. I think what Janet meant was you, you're a motley group. Um, each of us is characterized by a set of values articulated by our foundation's original donors, by boards of directors, or policies by elected officials and advisory councils. These various philosophies often dictate what we get to do and the relationships we have with our grantees. We are all very different. Not every part of this conversation will mean the same to everyone. So then at this meeting, we ask ourselves, how do we change the capitalization picture among arts and cultural organizations? And ultimately, we agreed that our capacity to rectify the situation, even collectively, all the money that we have is extremely limited. But we should, at the very least, get our own houses in order. We should change the way we talk to our grantees, we felt, and we should avoid certain practices that make things worse and take up certain practices that improve things. We had a very wide-ranging uh, discussion. It went all over the place. Uh, it, it's hard to believe that it settled into this very nice, neat document that you got. Lots of perspectives. But it went down to these key points. The arts, the vibrancy of the arts, creativity, the diversity of the field, and our ability to serve audiences are really threatened by this subject. It has been growing for years, and it is at a critical point. The subject is the, the, the organizations, the, the sectors lack of capital reserves to either invest in new ideas or new programs or weather downturns, and that's what we've all been seeing lately. In some markets, and this is going to be a real no-no to talk about, there really is an oversupply of product. Um, and in some cases, funders have made, by their practices and procedures, we've made the matters worse. Um, Within the nonprofit system, we agree, neither funders nor grantees have paid enough attention to financial help or the imbalance between supply and demand. Education, and new analytical tools, and technical assistance will not, in the absence of other significant changes in the way we and arts leaders work, improve anything. Both funders and arts leaders need to change some very deeply ingrained behavior. But as funders, we have influence beyond just our dollars. People do tend to pay attention to what we say. So in order to 
the, for the sector to get better, we, we, came, we concluded that it, it's not enough for individual philanthropies to change their practices, that really we should attempt as a field to change, work together on the subject, to understand and promote a common set of principles, uh, educating ourselves about capitalization, and that's the hard one. That does mean having to learn about the balance sheet, uh, and discussing the subject openly and candidly with grantees. We are asking you then to strive for a, a set of practices and principles and create incentives that will encourage its organizations to address their long-term capital needs. So here's what they are. These are the principles that we thought we would present to you for your discussion today. One, encourage surpluses and operating reserves. Break even isn't enough anymore. Be certain that we all understand the importance of capital reserves and healthy balance sheets and embed good capitalization practices and principles in our conversations with our grantees. This means we need to understand it ourselves. Encourage organizations with untenable business models, and we all know who they are, to take steps, bold ones if needed, to adjust the way they work. Whenever possible, offer general operating support. At the very least, all funding should be directed towards institutions' core activities and not draw human or financial resources away from those activities. Ideally, project support should be fully funded and it should include the, all the indirect costs related to the project as well. We agreed that funders should be clear about the structure and timeline of grants. Don't let grantees be lulled into thinking that your money is going to come year after year if it's not. But finally, we recognized all that no matter what we do, this is gonna be a very slow process of change in our field. And again, we were simply trying to uh, do what we could do to get, grant to, 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 to get the grant making houses in order. It won't change overnight. Strengthening the field, we'll, we'll start uh, with conversations with grantees, asking the right questions, and encouraging rather than punishing surpluses. I didn't know people punished surpluses, but we can contribute if we do this to building a stronger sector, both nationally and in our own individual communities. And in that way, we believe that ties back to the arts. The organizations would be able to create more engaging and inventive arts experiences and reach out to a broader and more diverse audience.